Jeremiah Johnson, the 1972 film starring Robert Redford, is based on a real-life story of a fighting man who lived alone as a trapper in the Rocky Mountains from 1824 to 1900. The Marvel comic character Wolverine, Logan, or James Howlett, has also been a solitary mountain man associated with the Rockies before and even during his time as a superhero. In fact, there are several interesting parallels between the two characters. I actually first watched the movie last week, and that night I woke up in the middle of my sleep and listed commonalities shared by these characters for two hours. After that, I watched the movie again and read what little I could find about it online. Given the number of similarities between the movie and the comic, I found it strange that there does not seem to be any mention of this on the internet. In this video, I'm going to point out all the similarities and likenesses I could find, no matter how small. Could the movie have inspired the comic character? I'd like to know what you think, so please share your opinions in the comments. The movie, Jeremiah Johnson, was released in 1972, and Wolverine made his first appearance in 1974. This two-year difference suggests that the film could have been fresh in the minds of Wolverine's creators. Even here in the original movie poster for Jeremiah Johnson, and the cover of Wolverine's first appearance, you can see that the colors yellow and blue are prominent, and both men have a lot of metal in their hands. Both characters are born in the 1800s and embody the rugged mountain man archetype, thriving in the harsh, untamed environment of the Rockies. Although neither was known to tend cattle, both dress and behave similar to the paradigmatic cowboy of the Old West. Both are tragic characters who endure significant physical and mental hardships, misfortunes, and tragedies. This theme of survival against the odds and never getting a break is a recurring narrative element for both. Both characters endure trauma and torment, demonstrating remarkable resilience despite persistent bad luck. Both characters find themselves drawn to a rugged natural frontier, particularly snowy, mountainous, wooded areas of the northwestern portion of the North American continent. There were also both trappers who caught their own food and collected pelts. Jeremiah Johnson deserted the army after striking an officer and decided to live on his own. Similarly, Wolverine accidentally killed his childhood companion Rose while fighting and subsequently decided to live outdoors with Canadian wolves. So both men chose solitude after violence as almost a self-inflicted punishment. Both men are complex characters who prefer to live alone and to be left alone. They find solace and identity in the remote natural world away from civilization in a solitary lifestyle. Interestingly, Wolverines are solitary and territorial animals. Jeremiah Johnson marries an indigenous woman named Swan. This narrative arc is similar to Wolverine's story involving his Native American girlfriend, Silver Fox. They also build and live in a log cabin with these women. They're both completely romantically committed to them and create a life of subsistence hunting and gathering in the wilderness with them. Both men's Native American partners are horrifically and bloodily murdered inside their log cabin while they were away. Wolverine's partner is killed by his archenemy Sabretooth, whereas Jeremiah's wife is killed by a group of Indians after he travels through their sacred hunting ground. They both carry their dead women in their arms wrapped up in a red sheet. The death of their romantic interest becomes a pivotal moment in both men's lives. Both characters have a fundamentally good nature, but were driven to violence by the same traumatic event. The murder of their significant other set them on a path of revenge and retribution. In Jeremiah's case, it created a 12-year vendetta against the Crow tribe. In Wolverine's case, it created a multi-decade feud with Sabretooth. Both men adhere to a firm code of personal honor and help many people selflessly. However, they've also murdered many men and made many morally ambiguous choices in pursuing vigilante justice. Thus, both men are anti-heroes because they stray from the conventional heroic paradigm. Jeremiah Johnson and Wolverine are formidable fighters who take on multiple opponents simultaneously. Wolverine frequently enters a near berserk state while battling groups of men. Interestingly, Jeremiah also does this in his movie, engaging multiple men in a fury at once. Jeremiah screams or roars after killing someone, and this is something Wolverine does frequently. Their fighting qualities make them both fierce, fearsome, animalistic figures capable of great violence when pushed. As you may know, 
Wolverine has three razor-sharp, retractable adamantium claws housed in each arm that he uses in close combat. Similarly, Jeremiah Johnson's weapon of choice was a large knife that he carried at his waist throughout the movie. Like Wolverine, he kept it sheathed until ready to use. He stabbed several men with it. He also claimed to be excellent at skinning animals and said he could skin grizzly bears as fast as they could be found. This somewhat echoes Wolverine's skill at carving with his claws. We see Jeremiah Johnson get injured several times in the movie. This includes being mauled by wolves, shot, stabbed in the gut, slashed in the face, struck in the back by a tomahawk, and impaled by a spear on different occasions. In the following scenes, he appears healed and carries little to no injury. This ability to survive severe injuries with minimal long-term consequences mirrors Wolverine's iconic healing factor, his superpower. Both characters have significant interactions with the Blackfoot Indian tribe. Members of the Blackfoot notably ambush Jeremiah Johnson, and Wolverine's wife was Blackfoot. Both characters have memorable, close quarters encounters with dangerous wildlife, most notably bears and wolves. This emphasizes their bestial nature, survival skills, and deep connection to the wilderness. Reticent, taciturn, and abrupt, both characters tend to keep their thoughts to themselves. They allow others to talk, but often say as little as necessary. Both characters speak in an old-fashioned Western way and use some of the same idioms. Jeremiah says, right cheer, on account of, and a mite early. Wolverine has a distinctive language and speaking style characterized by his rough and often terse manner. He frequently uses short, clipped sentences, contractions, and has a penchant for bluntness and straightforwardness. His speech often includes a mix of slang and informal language, reflecting his rugged personality and hardened, no-nonsense approach to life. Same goes for Jeremiah. Their personalities are strikingly similar, characterized by rough-edged individualism. They're both upstanding and friendly underneath, but tend to act curmudgeonly and distant. These traits often make them seem unapproachable, but also add to their mystique. Both Jeremiah Johnson and Wolverine are mentally tough, self-confident, and highly experienced, able to handle whatever challenges come their way. They demonstrate olden day American determination, spirit, and grit. They're both middle-aged white men. They both squint heavily, and neither character is particularly tall, contrasting with the traditional image of towering heroes like John Wayne and Rock Hudson. This makes them more relatable and unique. Robert Redford is 5'9", and Wolverine is between 5'3 and 5'5". They both also sport unkept facial hair and maintain the hair on their head around the same length. They both also have conspicuous body hair. As you've seen in the last three pictures, there are also times when Jeremiah's hair is slightly turned up, appearing similar to Wolverine's characteristic hairstyle. Jeremiah Johnson smoked tobacco once in the movie, and Wolverine smokes regularly, mostly cigars. Through most of the movie, Jeremiah Johnson wears a yellowish shirt and light blue pants. The blue pants have a yellow stripe down the side. He also wears yellow, blue, and black on the movie poster, which is the central picture here. These were clothes he obtained during his involvement in the Mexican-American War. In that war, the American forces generally wore blue wool coats with lighter blue trousers and gold braids and insignias. Of course, Wolverine's most recognizable costume is blue and yellow. Wolverine's alternative costume, introduced in 1980, is orange and brown. Jeremiah's jacket is tan and brown. Also, both men are frequently seen in reddish brown coat or poncho. They both typically wear dark boots and a tan cowboy hat. It's also interesting that the straps that usually cross Jeremiah's chest form an X, like the symbol that Wolverine wears, X standing for the X-Men. I also want to bring his jacket to your attention. It has three stripes down either side. The stripes even run down the arm in a way that hints at Wolverine's pair of three retractable claws. Jeremiah Johnson's wife is the daughter of a French Blackfoot chief named Two Tongues LeBeau. This man shares a last name with Wolverine's long-haired French-speaking friend and teammate, Gambit, whose real name is Remy LeBeau. Jeremiah Johnson adopts a young mute boy that he names Caleb. He begins to raise and teach the boy before he dies. This is similar to how Wolverine has mentored several young mutants, including Jubilee and Shadowcat. It's worth mentioning that in the beginning of the movie, Jeremiah Johnson himself is mentored by an old man named Bearclaw. 
This relationship is akin to how Wolverine is mentored by Professor Charles Xavier. Bearclaw dedicates his time to hunting grizzly bears and collecting their claws. He mentions the claws and touches the claws on his necklace multiple times during the movie. In one scene, he even strings them together like beads. Keep in mind that the American grizzly bear has some of the largest and longest claws in the animal world. Just another coincidence, maybe? Possibly. But it's a lot of coincidences for one movie. At the end of the movie, Jeremiah Johnson states that he's decided to head for Canada, which aligns with Wolverine's Canadian origin and nationality. Jeremiah wanted to head there because, as he said, I've heard there's land there that a man has never seen, demonstrating his wish to be a lone, trailblazing pioneer. Jeremiah spent time in Montana, and Wolverine was born and lived in Alberta. The two regions share a border, and thus they could have been neighbors. While fighting, Jeremiah Johnson's ally, Del Gu, pronounces his fighting prowess by comparing it to that of a Wolverine. He says, I can whip my weight in Wolverines. This line could have planted a seed or contributed to the cultural melu that influenced the creation of Wolverine. Comic creators tend to look for fun, exciting, powerful, or relatable symbols, and this movie may have linked Wolverines to a fierce, primal power in many people's minds at that time. So there's undoubtedly some resemblance and parallelism here, but have I let my imagination run away with me? It's common for people to find connections or patterns where none actually exist. There are multiple cognitive biases recognized in psychology that may have corrupted the way I gathered evidence for this video and thought about these issues. These include illusory correlation, which is perceiving a relationship between variables even when no such relationships exist. Confirmation bias, the, ten the tendency to search for and interpret information in a way that confirms one's preconceptions. The Texas sharpshooter fallacy, which occurs when someone emphasizes similarities and ignores differences to fit a certain pattern or narrative. Or pareidolia, which is the tendency to perceive familiar symbols like faces in random objects or patterns. So some of the points I try to make here are reaching, and some of the examples are cherry-picked and coincidental. To skeptics, they really may seem like a stretch, but to someone that studies iconography or literary, mythological, or symbolic analysis, they might seem compelling. Either way, the parallels highlight the thematic and narrative similarities between the two characters. The convergence of many elements, reluctant violence, interactions with indigenous cultures, heroes overcoming immense personal tragedies in the wilderness, and their resulting solitary, rugged lifestyles, suggest that the archetype embodied by Jeremiah Johnson may have influenced the creation or development of Wolverine, whether directly or indirectly. These cultural cross-pollinations are common in creative works where components from various sources blend together to form new characters and stories. The influences on Wolverine likely came from a mixture of literary and cultural sources just as they do for other comic characters. So the Batman character was influenced by a number of wealthy protagonists that led a double life fighting crime such as Zorro, the Shadow, and the Scarlet Pimpernel. He was also affected by the dark gothic elements of Dracula such as the cape and cowl and the detective skills of Sherlock Holmes. The creation of Superman was influenced by exotic or alien characters with great strength, such as John Carter of Mars, Doc Savage, and biblical figures like Samson. Spider-Man was influenced by characters like the Spider, who wore a spider-themed outfit, and the Fly, who had insect-like abilities. Wonder Woman was influenced by Greek mythology, and characters like Rosie the Riveter, who was the embodiment of strong women during World War II. The Hulk was inspired by the dual identity of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as well as Frankenstein, a misunderstood creature with immense strength. Iron Man seems to have been influenced by inventor and industrialist Howard Hughes, as well as James Bond. In many of these cases, the creators divulged their inspirational sources. However, there does not seem to be direct evidence in the form of creator interviews or documentation linking Jeremiah Johnson to Wolverine. Several people created the Wolverine we know today over many years. This includes Roy Thomas, Len Wein, John Romita Sr., Chris Claremont, Dave Cochran, John Byrne, and Frank Miller. To provide more detail, Marvel Comics Editor-in-Chief Roy Thomas asked writer Len Wein to design a character specifically named Wolverine, who was a Canadian of small stature with a Wolverine's fierce temper. John Romita Sr. designed the first costume and introduced the retractable claws. 
It took other authors like Chris Claremont, who created Silver Fox in 1989, decades to flesh out the hero's backstory. After watching Jeremiah Johnson, the next movie I saw was Missouri Breaks. I was surprised to see that Jack Nicholson's character in the movie was named Tom Logan. His character is called Logan throughout most of the movie. He's a soul, dry, ornery, charismatic cattle rustler. The movie came out in 1976, less than one year before Chris Claremont first named Wolverine Logan in X-Men number 103. I think Chris may have pulled the name from the cinema, just like he pulled inspiration for Silver Fox. Of course, this is to neglect to mention that the movie Logan's Run came out in 1976 as well. So clearly, it's not the case that this one movie heavily influenced a single creator, but even if not directly acknowledged, it's plausible that the film, Jeremiah Johnson's portrayal of a rugged, solitary, morally complex man surviving in the wilderness, resonated with Wolverine's originators and contributed to the shaping of the character. Whether intentional or coincidental, conscious or unconscious, the parallels between Jeremiah Johnson and Wolverine are indeed striking, and if you allow me to say it, uncanny. Here's a recap. Because of his personality, Wolverine has been my favorite comic character since childhood. If you're a Wolverine fan and have not seen Jeremiah Johnson, I definitely recommend watching it. Especially given that this year is the 50 year anniversary of Wolverine's comic book debut.